purpose of this video is to show you how to send transactional email in your web application. And we're going to start with a simple application that has a Feathers back end and a React front end. And in the React front end, there's just a little form. You fill out an email address and the application generates an email. So the first thing we're going to do is set up the skeleton application. So I'm going to clone the application. And we're going to go into the project directory into the front end first. And um, install the dependencies with yarn. And <clears throat> while we're at it, we can work on the back end. So we'll go into the um, project directory in the back end subdirectory and install its dependencies with npm. Okay, and then we have the dependencies for the front end, and so we will now build it. And then we can go into the back end and start the back end running so on port 8080. npm run dev for the development server. And now we should be able to preview the application.
And there we go, the application has a home page, an about page, and an email page with the form. And right now it, it doesn't do anything, so I can fill in an email address and click on send, but, but nothing happens at this point. Okay, so what we want to do is add the capability to this application to actually send uh, an email. And um, we're not going to send an email directly. Uh, currently, it's very hard to get email delivered. It's uh, quite a bit of an art to set up an email server for sending email. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to utilize a third party service provider. So there are many of these that will send uh, transactional email or bulk email or notification email for you, like Amazon Simple Email Service or SendGrid. In this case, we're going to use uh, the SendGrid service. So the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, set up a SendGrid account. And if you're already logged into your Google account and you go to the SendGrid Marketplace page, <clears throat> and click on the button to start with the free plan. And I've already subscribed. What you would see in uh, in your case would be a button to allow you to subscribe to the SendGrid uh, service and the SendGrid is going to collect some information from you. You'll set up an account and then you'll be punted back to this page and it will look uh, it will look like this uh, at that point. So there's uh, a bit of extra work I'm not going to show you here in terms of registering the account. It's pretty self-explanatory. But when you land back here, um, the next thing you want to do is uh, click on the button to manage your API keys on the SendGrid website. And we're going to have to do a couple of things here. We're going to have to validate the domain that we're going to send from. And also we are going to have to uh, create some keys that our application can use to, to send email. So the first thing we're going to do is authenticate our domain for sending. So I'm going to go into the settings uh, page and under sender authentication. I've already validated one. Uh, what it's going to look like for you to authenticate your own is you would click on the uh, the button to authenticate a new domain or another domain, or, uh, or actually it's probably going to look something like this. It's going to say domain authentication and there'll be a get started button. And so you would click on that uh, button and we would identify our host and so we are using Google Cloud as our DNS host so it will give us instructions specific to that we don't need to brand the links that's not that's something we need to do and then click on the next button and then what you want to do is identify the domain from which you want to send email and so that would be your 4949 uh, NN domain dot xyz and click on the next button and it is going to identify a number of uh, DNS records that you will have to set up for your domain so for your 4949 NN uh, domain you're gonna have to set up these three um, CNAME records so I'll just go through those and uh, Let's go to the cloud DNS application. Into that zone. And I'm going to have to add these three C name records. So they're going to be a C name record in each case. And the first one is looks something like that. And I'm going to have to grab the value for that. And then the second one. 
So these are the domain key DNS records. So it's a C name record as well. And the value for that. and the second domain key record. And the value for that one. And uh, so you can see there they are. So there's that one and the domain key records. And uh, I'm not gonna do it, but uh, because there's a bit of a delay, um, so it might take five minutes or so for those DNS records uh, to become active. Once that happens and you've checked that they're working, you can click on the check mark there and verify, and then it will uh, validate the domain for you. I'll try it here, but I don't think it's gonna work right off the bat. Uh, yeah, so again, probably in a few minutes uh, this will work. Um, so eventually that the domain gets validated. The second thing you uh, need to do is create an API key that you can um, use to send email with. And so I'm going to just do that here, even though the domain isn't validated yet. So you would go through the email API menu item and the integration guide. And uh, we are going to be using, there's a couple of methods that you can use to interact with the SendGrid service. We're going to use the SMTP relay. So you would choose that. And you would name the API key that you're going to generate. Click on the button to create the key. And it will generate a password uh, for you. And so uh, I, what I would do is just copy this into a text file so that you have all the information, the server, the ports, the username, and, uh, and the password. Server ports and username, this is gonna be the same for everyone who's using SendGrid. SendGrid, the password obviously is going to be um, unique. So I would, uh, I would make copies of those. Okay, the, the next thing uh, that we're gonna do then is make changes to our, our front end. So I am going to open up the email form. And so this is the skeleton form that doesn't really do anything at this point. So we're gonna modify it to actually send an email. And so we're gonna to have to bring in the Feathers uh, client API so that we can connect to the Feathers backend. So we'll import that module. And we are going to, for this component, for the email form, we are gonna to have to set up some state, which is really the only thing that's gonna be part of the state is the, uh, is the uh, Feathers client connection object. And so we'll just set up a state uh, uh, environment variable for this component to hold on to that. So we will add a constructor for the component that just sets the initial state for the component to be the, the empty object. And the next thing we're going to have to do is when the component mounts, we will have to get a handle to that feathers service object. And so that's what that will look like. So our feathers backend already has an email service defined. And in our front end on the client side, we want to get a connection to that backend uh, service. So we will set that up. 
when the when the email form component mounts and in the application and uh, that will become the new state uh, for this component so that we can use that value in other methods primarily the send email uh, event handler and that is the last thing that we are going to set up and that is uh, when somebody fills out the form and submits it what we want to do is actually send an email to the address that was filled in the form and so we'll add the code for that <clears throat> and uh, so we get a we get a handle to the form element we get its value out we just indicate just uh, for debugging purposes we'll log that to the console and then we are going to use that email service so this dot state dot email is the feathers uh, email service we are going to invoke the create uh, method and the only object that's going to that is is the to address uh, for the email and then if that succeeds then we res we reset the form field so we make the input value blank so that somebody could send another email or, or what have you. And that's pretty much it for the front end. So I'm going to save those changes and I'm going to rebuild the front end. And while we're waiting for that, we can go on to the uh, back end changes that we're going to have to make and I'm just going to stop the feathers back end from running for the time being and I am going to generate a hook so we already this skeleton application already has a simple in-memory service for emails and uh, doesn't do much of anything right now what we're going to do is add in an after hook uh, so that when we receive the request from the client, then we're going to go off and uh, send the email. And that code to send the email is going to be implemented inside um, an after hook. So we will use the Feathers CLI to generate that hook. And we will install the Feathers CLI first. And the name of the hook is going to be send email. It is going to be executed after for the email service on the create op operation. And so now we can open up that hook function. And uh, first off, we will just um, just sort of print out the object that's uh, coming in, or we'll get uh, we'll get a copy of the object that's coming in and print that out. So I am going to replace this function, which simply returns the context, with a function that is going to um, extract the result from the con 
uh, the, the context and, uh, and print that out. And maybe let's just rerun the back end. And I'm going to go back to the home page for the application. I'm going to do a hard refresh just to make sure that I pick up the changes to uh, the front end that we made earlier. And I'm going to go back to the email. I'm going to fill it out with a value and click on send. And so it got blanked out. And if we look in the console in the front end, uh, there it is, so it got logged in the front end, and if we have a look at the back end, it got logged in the in the back end there. So uh, everything's connected, uh, but we're not sending any email yet. We're just passing the email address uh, from the front end to the back end, and it's the back end that's actually going to deliver the, the email. So that's the first piece of it. Um, the second thing we're going to do is just we're going to be a little bit careful here um, in the sense that we just don't want this to become a spam relay and people sending email everywhere. So just for the purposes of this application, we're only going to allow email to be sent to a relatively small number of recipients. So I'm just going to rewrite that uh, function slightly. And what's happening in this case is uh, we're going to extract the result from the context as before. I have a list of recipients that we're going to email to. And if, uh, if what was requested is not in this list of saved uh, recipients, we're not going to go any further. We'll just log a message and return the context and, and nothing else uh, will happen. The, the idea is that um, you know if the recipient is in this safe list, then we'll go on and actually uh, send send the email. In terms of actually sending the email, I am going to have to stop the back end. We are going to use a package called Node Mailer, and so we will install that first. And because we are writing code in TypeScript, we will install the corresponding types package for Node Mailer as well. And we can bring that in to our hook module. So I want to bring in node mailer and we're going to extend this uh, hook function one more time to uh, in the in the case where in the case where um, the email address is okay so it's in the list of the safe uh, recipients we are going to use the the node mailer module we're going to get a transport which is going to be a connection to the SendGrid service. So we identify the port, the host, the port, a few other parameters, our authorization, credentials, username, and password. In this case, um, like we've done previously, we are going to store any kind of uh, sensitive uh, values like the password for the service in, a, in an environment variable. So I know the host, the port, the user are all hard coded, but like I said, they're the same for everyone, so not particularly sensitive. However, that password uh, value is definitely a sensitive value, so we're going to pass that by way of a, an environment variable. And then the last thing we're going to do is actually send the email. <clears throat> I 
So once we get a connection uh, to the service, we can go ahead and send the email. So the, uh, the, the node mailer transporter has a send mail method. It takes an object which has a from address, a to address, um, and, uh, and the subject and the text of the email. I'm going to tidy up the from address so that it actually looks like um, a domain that I have verified with the um, uh, with the service provider with SendGrid in this case and that should be pretty much it. So I can go ahead and save that and oh, restart the back end. And let's go to the front end, back to the home page. Again, I'm doing a hard refresh, even though I didn't really change anything in the front end, but just in case, we'll go to the email form. I'll enter my address and click on send email. And missing credentials. Oh dear, so that might be related to the SendGrid password, possibly. Yeah, so I don't think it is uh, set. So I am going to set that environment variable. And try one more time. And there we go. And uh, what we get in the in the back end now is first off we check the email address. It passes that test, and then we uh, we call the send mail method on the transporter. And what we get back from that is just a message. Well, we get back a lot of things, but we get a, a message ID when that is successfully sent. And hopefully, if everything else is working, uh, this email will eventually uh, show up in the in the actual inbox of the um, of the person that it was uh, was sent to. And so that's it for uh, sending transactional or notification email uh, from a web application.